So question seven then from people, one of the 2021 Advanced Higher Maths resource paper. Six mark question, graph of a rational function. But again, you don't have to do an awful lot in it. You don't have to find the stationary points, which is generally the biggest part of it. What it says, A, first of all, for the graph of, so it'll be y equals, state the equation of the vertical asymptote just for the one mark. Well, the vertical asymptote means the y-coordinate just shoots off to infinity. So the only way that that would shoot off to infinity would be if the denominator is zero. So for this, you would have to have, the if the denominator was equal to zero, that means the equation would be x equals two. So that seems to be all they want. But what you should do at the same time is put a little sketch down. And for that little, there's the vertical asymptote there, a little sketch of it. What exactly happens to the value of the function? What exactly happens to the y-coordinate as you approach this? Because you know what happens when you're there, it just blows up. So there's two ways you could approach it. If you're approaching it from this side, so if the graph's on this side of it, x will be bigger than 2, so it'll be positive. So it must be going up the way, the graph on this side. If you're on this side of it, if x is less than 2, that'll be a negative. And so the answer will be a negative, so it must be going like this. So that's the picture of the graph as it approaches that vertical asymptote. I know it didn't ask for that, but you should do that anyway. Second bit. Part two, find the equation of the non-vertical asymptote and justify your answer. Again, it's not asking how it approaches it, but you should do that a little diagram as well for that. Well, for the non-vertical asymptote, you want to know what happens to the graph. What does it look like as x gets very big? Now, don't just do this as if you're trying to find the limit. Don't just say, well, if I divide the top and everything on the top and the bottom by x, I'll have x over 1 minus 2 over x. And then if you let x go to infinity, what's going to happen is that term will disappear. So you'll just have x over 1. So it's effectively x, which means it goes to infinity. So that doesn't mean that the asymptote is x. That's just for finding the limit. So don't just divide everything by x there. That just tells you what its value will be. No, if you want to know what the asymptote looks like, then you'll need to rearrange this into a different form. In other words, carry out that division. I'll do the division over here. So I want to do x minus 2 into x squared. Now there should be three terms there. So dividing that in, an x times an x, x column. So that would give me an x squared minus 2x. Subtract it. So take away a negative makes that a positive 2x. So that's just plus 0. So I'll be a 2, a positive 2. 2 times that is 2x minus 4. And when you subtract it, you get 4. Now, what that division tells you is, if you were to carry out that division, it would go in this number of times, that's the quotient, and that would be the remainder. So that tells me that f of x, which is just y, should be x plus 2 with a remainder of 4. A remainder of 4 that's still being divided by x minus 2. Maybe should have written y there. So, what happens as x goes to infinity? Well, this term disappears. So that means that the asymptote is going to be y equals x plus 2 as this part, 4 over x minus 2, I've bumped into this, tends to 0 as x tends to infinity either way round. Now there was one mark for doing the division. And there was one mark for getting the result with that explanation. So I'll have to put it over here to incorporate it. Now at the same time, because I've still to sketch, the, sketch it, so x plus 2, I'll just put the dotted line like this. How does the graph approach this as x tends towards either plus or minus infinity? Well, this expression will tell you. If x is getting very big and positive, this term will be positive, so this will be added on to it, which means you must be above it, because the y-coordinates will be bigger. As x goes to negative infinity, x will be a negative number. That'll make this extra part a negative, which makes it below this number. So that must be the way it approaches it. So those are the approaches to the vertical asymptote and the non-vertical asymptote, although it doesn't ask for that.
Right, in part B, now it's talking about the graph. The turning points in the graphs, I've written Y equals, the turning points in the graph are 0, 0 and 4, 8. And I've taken a note of the two asymptotes here and the way they should approach them. It just says, for one mark on the diagram provided, I don't know what that looks like particularly, sketch the graph of Y equals F of X. In other words, sketch this graph. Well, you just put down the information you've got. So it's got a vertical asymptote here. It's got a non-vertical asymptote here. It's got a turning point at the origin. Well, that's quite handy. And it's got a turning point at 4, 8. So I'll put that up here somewhere. Now you just make the curve go through those points and approach these asymptotes the way you previously decided. So it's got to be from up here through there and then go off there above. So it's just going to come down like this. I'll move that turning point over to here so it's actually on the bottom. And don't forget to put in the coordinates. Here it's going to go down on this side and approach it from below. So that's quite handy because it all fits in neatly. So it's going to go like this. So all of that was just for the, the one mark. So part C then, on the diagram provided, sketch the graph of y equals the absolute value. See the modulus sign there, the absolute value of f of x. That means if something is negative, it gets plotted as positive. Positive is fine, it just stays the way it is. And you have to show all the asymptotes. Well, if it's going to get flicked around, there'll be a couple of changes. Well, flipping that about the x-axis will still be the same. So that's still x equals 2. However, that's going to flip over this way, like this. It's not asking for equations. That's obviously x minus 2, because that was plus 2, minus 2. Now, those parts don't actually apply to the graph. So... This part of the graph will be unaffected. This will still look like that. It'll come down and then head off to that asymptote and put the lowest point about there. Maybe I should have marked them in, 4, 8. Maybe I should have marked 4, 8 in and there. I should think so too. However, this part, which was below, will now have to go above. Still passing through the origin though. So instead of going down, it's going to come from above turn at the origin and then head off to this new asymptote and it seems to be diverging a wee bit so it would end up looking like this then so that's a mark after having done all that and in part two state the values of k for which the absolute value of f of x and that's this graph here is equal to k has got exactly two distinct solutions distinct solutions it's not a very good looking turning point there now, remember, that's the y-coordinate. So having two distinct solutions means you've got two points with the same y-coordinate. Well, down here at the origin, I that shouldn't be as low as that, there's only one. Anything above that, so anything above the zero, I've got two cuts, two cuts, two cuts, until I hit this point, and then it becomes three. And then after that, it becomes four. So it's between the zero and the eight. Any line, horizontal line between zero and eight will have two. Two, y, two points, two y-coordinates. So that means k's got to lie between 0 and 8.